All right, Paul, so just, I guess the first thing is, uh, how long have you been speaking out and what prompted the speaking out? <laughs> well, um, it got to the stage, uh, I was 41, and having abduction, whatever experiences, I, I don't like the word abduction, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't find the word for it, but it got to the stage where the trauma was that bad that I had to speak out to someone and find somebody who understood. Because telling people about it, you know, friends, friends that I've lost through it because I thought I was lope, blah, blah, blah. And finding that person that had actually believed me and not stand there go do 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 with a little bloody, you know what I mean? Tinfoil hat wearer thing. And, um, yeah, so it's like, I looked on Google and I thought, right, who do I, the first thing that come up with Amash A, what is it? You know, I looked at like, you know, so it's like, what the hell's Amash? Never heard of it before. I rung up this Joanne, so I rings her up, and she answers, I put the phone down, does it again, does it day after. I thought, right, if I don't do it, I never will. You know what I mean? So I, <laughs> I rings up and I went, oh, you know, is this so much blah, blah, blah. And, and she says, yeah, I says, right, I says, I'm having, I was really, really nervous, you know. I'm having these things happening in my life and I don't know what they are and I'm seeing these little greys and and, you know, craft and, and stuff like this. And I, I don't know, I, I think I'm talking to the wrong person. She went, no, no, no. And she, I can't remember the conversation, but it went a bit like that. And she says, I'll put you through to somebody who, in your area, who will understand and, you know, if I can give you a phone number and stuff. And that's when she put me through to Sasha Krista. So is this drawn some skills? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Used to run a mash. That a mash, yeah. And what line was that, then? Hey? How, how long ago was that? When I was 41. When you were 41. So right. nine years ago. Nine years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's, so since you started speaking out, we'll call it publicly, even though you haven't been. Yeah, you aren't really that public. Yeah. But yeah, go on, yeah. But, you know, since you started being more open, shall we say? Yeah. What has been the result of that? Um. Oh God, what's been the result of it? It's an hard to answer that because it can either go both ways. It can either... I know UFO seems very, um, over years, there's a lot of snobbery in there. And you're either pushed to one side and not believed or they take the same people on every time. You know what I mean? But... On the other hand, there's a lot of help and I feel better for talking about it for people who are in the same situation as me. So, yeah, it, it works both ways. It so has it been a bit of a cleansing sort of process in your life? Yeah, it's made me, it's, I'm not, it were all bottled up before, so it were all trauma, but now it's, it's trauma mixed in with that happiness and thingy, knowing that there's somebody there at the end of a phone. And has it, has it helped then? Yeah. Yeah so, yeah. yeah, so let's go right back, as far as we can get back. What, what is your first, the first memory? A bird. <laughs> um, when I were four year old, um, I used to go to nursery, which is over, just over at Main Road, over there, and my mum used to pick me up in the morning, so it's like I'd be there in the morning in nursery and come home about half past 11 or something. And the neighbours who used to live, this were at the other side of the street where I lived, and the neighbour a bit further up there, she used to go like ballroom dancing and you know what I mean, all this bits of dancing stuff. So she had all these different dresses and anyway, um, what she didn't want, she used to give to me. So I'd have these little shoes on, you know what I mean? But they'd be, I'd have to tie some elastic around them uh, and then dresses that were too big. So my mum would put knots in shoulders, you know, these fancy dresses and that. And I'd go 
into the back garden, go onto the midding top where, underneath where the toilet used to be, outside toilet, and uh, just sit on there and, and dream, dream away, you know what I mean? And, and, or dancing on. And I'd get a little stone and like scratch my name on midding top at the toilet. And it were basically, I'd be just sat there minding me on business, you know, all the kids are at school. And I kind of looked round, I remember looking round, you know, like something made me look round up to the house opposite, but back at shops. And on the roof would be a blackbird. And it, I remember it had like an orangey red beak. Didn't take much notice of it. I can't remember when it actually come, flew down to me and sat right next to me. And it started talking to me telepathically. But it's like as if I'd not, it, won't, it didn't come as a great surprise to me either. So it had said to me questions like, you know, do you like your family? This were all telepathically, but I understood it totally. You know, it was just like a second language. And, you know, do you like your family? Do you like school? What, you know, where's your friends? What, you know, it, and every, every day it had come down, asked the same questions, but in different format. So I'd either speak to it verbally, so it talked to me telepathically and I'd answer verbally or I'd answer telepathically back or a mixture of both. And then one day, it's like my mum would say, you know, come out, oh, you're talking to her because she thought somebody was the back at wall, you know, so anybody could pinch me, you know, oh, you're talking to her. And this bird would be sat there, but it kind of look. It were very human, like, the way that human mannerism sort of kind of look towards the door at her, and then turn back, look at me, and then fly off up to the thing. And um, she, you know, it'd be like, oh, you're talking to her, what, that bird, Inca. But I didn't know, I didn't call it Inca at that time. I don't remember that. You know what I mean? Then one day it come back down, it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Probably some days it didn't come. You know, I, can't, I were only four, I can't remember, you know, the specific days or whatever. And uh, yeah, it, and one day it come down and it said, I won't be coming back no more, but I'll come back when you're older. But not in them words, I know what it meant, but not in them words. And I were heartbroken. I were absolutely heartbroken. And me, and I went in house and I remember my mum saying, you know, what's wrong with you? I said, Inca's not coming back. Inca's not coming back. And that, that basically, that was that. And it was maybe eight years ago when my mum were talking to Sasha and we were all in here together in this room. And I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think it would have been me that brought it up about the bird because I didn't want my mum thinking, you know, she, have I imagined this? You know what I mean? But it, it, would either, it might have been Sasha or my mum who actually brought it up and said, I'd remember that bird or whatever. And um, she said, oh, yeah, yeah, you called it Inca. And I was like, what? What? You know what I mean? It, I never knew I'd called it Inca. And Sasha was here, so she can verify that, yeah. So your mum saw the bird? Yeah, yeah. So there's absolutely no doubting that this happened. Because mm. at, at times, you, when you look back now, do you question what Oh, I still question it. I still question everything that I've gone through. What, I, what do you think, what, looking back now, what do you think it was, do you think it was programming you? What do you think it was doing? Well, why would, for a start, why would it ask personal questions? Do you like your family? It's then, you know, years later and it goes through my head and I think, do you like your family? But uh, is that really my family? I've never kind of, as I've got older, I've never kind of been, I've never felt part of that family, you know? I've never wanted to be 
in the presence. I've never... So whether it was giving me that impression or it would... I really don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> it's so bizarre. So the voice, you mm. said it, it was telepathic. Yeah. It was, it was your voice in your own head, was it, that you would hear? Or was it a it's, it's voice. It's voice, and it's not like it's going through your ears. It's it's like if you imagine a a big marble in centre of your brain, yeah, uh, it's in it goes in there, uh, not through your ears. So it's a strange sensation until it happens to you. You don't really recognise what it is. So it's not like a. Thought. I do recognise it because I've had it since I was four. So to me, it's normal, but not in this life. Only when I'm with them. You know what I mean? So we wouldn't know the sensation? No, not if you're not... Y yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he, when, he, when he went... It's not like a thought. It, it's totally different. It's, it's, it, it's a language... Um, I can only say based on energy, um, some sort of energy, yeah. So it's a language with feeling? As yeah, to yeah, it's got feeling, yeah. Yeah. So when he went, definitely feel. Was, when, when you said he went and he didn't come back, mm. what was what happened? Did you did, did your mum react to him not coming back? Did you react to him? Not I reacted. Back? Yeah, I were I were distraught because he were my little friend. He, I, I'd known. I even though I were four, it felt like it were always a part of my life. You know, and and. <sighs> Always a part of my life, it sounds like, you know, but it's like as if he were always there with me. I, I, I knew him, I knew him, I knew him. How long did it go on for? Oh, weeks, probably months. I don't know. It went on and it were different questions in different formats. But, you know, like you get interrogated, like police or whatever, it will, and they try different formats of where they're asking you to catch you out. It were a bit like that, yeah. Ah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So after that, how soon did the other events? I was six year old at the next one. That kind of got put back, you know, I'm then going to, you know, at five year old to start full time school down, and so everything's. Um. I started losing interest in friends. Um, yeah, it, it, it like as if I didn't need anyone. Probably because he was my friend. Do you get what I mean? It sounds strange. It sounds so stupid, you know, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but it like as if I didn't need anyone else. So my next one was I was six year old. And I um, was in the kitchen at the other house with my mum. It was only about six o'clock at night, October. So it would be 1976, 75, 76. And she used to have the curtains open slightly like that. Uh, a bit like me, because I can't go to bed with curtains shut. I've got to open them like that. And... Um, Big light were on, <laughs> you know, big light. Anyway, we had a dog called Candy, a golden Labrador. And my mum used to sit in the kitchen by the washing machine on a little stool and watch washer go round and round and round. Yeah. I don't know why. And I used to run about with Candy, da, 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 you know, in and out of the kitchen. Will you leave that dog alone, blah, blah, blah. And... I used to, and I don't know why, but this particular night, I'm stood kind of by the window, and I said to Candy, "Come on, quick, Candy, Candy, there's a pig at the window. Pig at the window. You know what I mean? It's like where, where the hell have I got that from? So there's this thing that I'm saying, there's a pig at the window. Come on, come on, and it comes bounding in through the kitchen, you know, and puts its kind of pause on the thing. There's nothing there, nothing to look out of the window. The street is in darkness. All you're getting is like one street light. And you could see 
like where people have drawn the curtains, but the likes of you through curtains, you know, and there's nobody out, nobody. And I kept saying it, and dog must have got bored of this, and my mum shouting me, leave that fucking dog alone, you know what I mean? So I thought, right, I'll give it one more go. I'll give it one more go, because I'm really naughty, right? So I go, Candy, there's a pig at window. And she comes bounding in. She actually puts her paws on the window sill. And she goes like that. She yelps and kind of slowly backs down, puts her feet, her paws on the floor and goes to the centre of the room really slow, all her ackles up on her back. And she's in the centre of the room and she walks, turns around, walks off, real, looking at window all the time in her kitchen. And I thought, what the hell's up with her? I thought, my mum's going to kill me. She's going to think that I've hurt her or something, but she's really, she's got this really growl, you know, right? You know what I mean? Not really loud, but deep and quiet. And it was a yelping, and I thought, what? So I kind of went up to the window, and I'm looking like this, and I couldn't, I couldn't see, because, you know, big lights on. I'm looking out in darkness. It's a matter of adjusting my eyesight to the darkness, and I couldn't do it. So I was like that. I'd cut my hands, and I'm looking through a window, and it's this. When I saw this thing looking right at me, back at me, We've got a pane of glass in between us, and all I see is two big black eyes. And I kind of went, oh, like, it's, but at the same time as I've gone like that and screamed, these things jump back too. So whether it's me that's made that jump the same, I don't know. Or were it, you know, were it reacting to me? Were it mirroring my image and what I was doing? And I've never seen anything so horrible looking in all my life, you know, it was just horrible. And, and so it's this thing, and it's, I'd say it's about the same size as me, so I'm six years old at this point, you know, I'm probably about that big. And same, I, bald head, it's got a bald head, and, and I'm kind of, kind of looking at it, I'm back, but I'm, my eyes have adjusted now. So I'm kind of looking at it, and what happened was, it's kind of glided backwards. It, 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 we've got a little wall, probably that big. And it's glide, it's as if it's, it's took the motion of stepping backwards, but it hasn't touched anything. So it's glided backwards over the wall. And now what I'm seeing is, it's kind of leant over and it's looking at me like that. Really leant over, but yet its head is perfectly upright and it's looking at me like that. And it's like as if it's going to do a running motion. Really unnatural position it we're in. And it's got this blue, like a navy blue one piece suit on and it finishes there. And it's either above the knee or below the knee. Really tight one piece, so what we'd call lycra now, I suppose. And it's got a rounded neck, but not a tight rounded neck. It was wide enough for the head to go through. And it's, it's just a great thing. It's really, I don't recall seeing its mouth or, and I remember seeing a, a tiny bit of a, a, a nose, not a nose, but something's there. Do you get what I mean? But it's the eyes that I were drawn at, and then it started running up. But all the time it were looking at me like that, and it were, you know what I mean? It were, and arms were really long. And I've gone like that to lean out at window. I mean, my heart's go da 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 da. I'm shaking, sweating. And I'm trying to look out at window and it's gone past my neighbours and that's as far as I can see it. And all this has happened in a few seconds. A few seconds. And not once did my mum say, what, I screamed, you know, when this, I've got, oh, or screamed when I've, it's got that far from my face, yeah. And not once has my mum said, what you screaming for, what you doing, what you messing about at. But yet all the time before she were telling me off, 
for tormenting dog. So was she switched off? What? Well, you hear about that a lot, don't you? Either yeah. they're switched off or you're in this isolation. Yeah. Sort of yeah. This, this place. Yeah. So did you say it went through the wall when it stepped No, it, it over. over. It glided over, but it made the motion of running backwards. That's absolutely weird. It was about that far off the wall. Yeah, it's fate, yeah. So yeah. you must have, after that, you must have said to him, well, I've just... No. You didn't? No. The reason being because at the time, my mum had a boyfriend and he used to beat her up. And... And the dog got it as well, basically. So I didn't want to add to that trauma. So I had to carry my own trauma on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you always did that? Yeah. 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 Do you think that led into you not sharing more? Do you yeah. Think if that hadn't been the case, you would have... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Are you, are you familiar with the, the, the Love Bite Twin Flame scenario? Mm -hmm. where, where it's deemed that these, whoever these guys are, bring people into your life or into your family to steer you in certain directions right. and, or away from certain goals that you might be aspiring to or whatever. Uh, often a lot of these people are, are negative. With family, it's, it's different because your family is your family, I guess, but... In relationships, they can they can they can bond you with someone that is, that's not very good for you at all. <laughs> yeah, that's happened. that's happened in all my relationships, and this is why I'm single because I just can't get that person uh, that's like me. Do you get what I mean? It, it's like as if I know that if I wasn't with a certain person. It won't make me the person I am today, which is stronger and more. But yeah, it's it's like as if a, a, a test, being tra traumatised in relationships and what they do. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Why, mm. why do you think that is? I don't know. Is it a result of the experiences? I think it, it might be because it's all I ever knew, isn't it? Watching my mum being beat up. And these greys coming into my life and not wanting friends and so it's all I ever knew. So I, f I do find it difficult to make friendships as well. You know, as much as I open, I am as much as I, you know what I mean? I, I find it relative really, because I have this wall, this massive wall goes up. I've got this barrier. Yeah. So these beings, or whatever they are, are obviously aware of how these events... Are. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's still, in a sense, isolating you a little bit. Oh, yeah. So you're aware of it, but, you, but you're comfortable where you are. Yeah, I'm used to it. I'm used to being com this comfortable where I am, you know? But I'd like it. <laughs> I'd like to be that other person that's more open and... You know what I mean? But I, I wouldn't know how to do that. I wouldn't know how, you know, 50 years, how, how, how would I change that? This is going to sound ridiculous, but it's like as if they don't want me to have anybody. You know what, you know what I mean? It's, it's, and I've always said it, I'm not allowed. It, it sounds ridiculous, but it, I, that is the, all the feeling that I get, I'm not allowed to have a personal relationship or bond with anybody that's like me on a, on a male, you know? But whether that's me being traumatised from when I was younger, or them, I, or both of us, and that's the connection, I don't know. So if you couldn't speak about it, or just through protecting, through wanting to protect your mum or you, and your family, what after the after that event in the window did things get worse then? <sighs> things get worse. Every, they don't just get worse. It goes through different stages, and it's like I could have a ten year gap. 
I could have a five year gap, I could have a day gap. And, and the most times that my things were ramped up, is, you've heard me talk about Psycho Kev, yeah. And I were age 41 then. And um, it were as if they really hated him. They really hated him. And they did stuff deliberately. And it wasn't just ETs. I've had the door latch on the door. I've watched it open and it's flown back. But then he used to beat me up. And it were like, they were trying to drive him away from me. Really? So it's like, they give me trauma just to push it away from me. I, 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 exactly, I don't get it myself. That's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's almost like we're, we're only allowed to give you trauma, nobody else yeah, is. It, well, it's, yeah. It's like Kev's out traumatising us. We're going to have to stay. Hey. We're going to have to get rid of him. Yeah. That's yeah. bizarre, isn't it? Mm. So, what was the next significant event? You know? I was 12 year old on the next one, and this is in Judy Woods, which is like three miles that way, a uh, big woodland area. And I didn't know, obviously, at that time that it's, a, it's actually a UFO hotspot. And um, basically, I've gone, I've, my mate, we know, we're 12 year old, we go out and this, that, and other, but I said, I don't know what we're doing tonight. And she says, Oh, we'll go down to Judy Woods. We're talking October time, so it's dark early, you know, but we, when we'd set off, it wasn't that dark. So I can't. I'd say it was quarter past six, so, but in October, I'm sure it's darker than that. Dark at that time, do you get what I mean? I'm, I'm somewhere along the line, I'm confused with that day of what, what I'd... Maybe I've done summer in the daylight, then there's a big chunk missing and it's taken me to that point where we set off, you know, that... But we set off down to this woods quarter past six at night, I remember that. And I wouldn't tell my nan where I were going. I wouldn't tell anybody where I'm going because I'm not allowed. It's 12, you know, I'm 12 year old. I'm going three mile away. And um, I remember going down this snicket and this snicket's got like a tall, tall, it's wide enough for both of us. And it's really tall fence. So if you kind of stand on your toes, you could just look over and look at, the council houses and some of them have got bathroom lights or not, bedroom light or whatever. And then as we're going further down, this snicket thing, these trees, we're starting with woods now. I've tried finding the path and I cannot find this path at all. And, but then there's other houses being built since, so, you know, so, this tree's overlapping. It's, I think it's a full moon because I remember the brightness of it. It's clear sky and, you know, you, you know the moon gives off a lot of light anyway, you know. So I remember it. I, I just remember that going down this snicket with them. We're talking to each of them. And then it narrows and it seemed to go on quite a while, this little snicket. And... And we had to walk in single file then. So I can't remember whether she's in front of me or I'm behind or whatever, you know what I mean, other way around. And then it starts opening up again. By this point, houses have gone, the, you know, out of sight. So we're nearer, getting nearer in at woods now. And so it kind of opened up a bit more. So then we stood side by side. And as we're walking a bit further down, I'm trying to see with moonlight what, you know, where, where I'm trying to stand, you know, whether it's muddy or whatever. And I hear a lapping of water. So, you know, that really light lapping of water, you know, there's no wind or out like that. So I kind of went, oh, stop like this, because I thought it were closer than what it was, because, you know, we didn't wood, so it's really quiet now. And <laughs> sorry about the banging. <laughs> so... We're a lot closer now and I kind of stopped. But as my eyes adjusted, I could see that the water maybe five, ten feet away. 
So we kind of moved that bit closer because we knew we weren't near it. I could just hear it, but not see it. And then I realised it's a bit close. So moves a bit closer up to it. And um, we kind of talk. I remember her talking. I don't know what we're talking about. But it, it's really, it's really fuzzy now. You know, it's like, some it don't feel right, but it's not wrong either. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not scared, but some it's not quite right. And then I sees, I kind of looking round like this, and I sees this thing, <laughs> and it's upright, and it's maybe from there to there, above the water, about 10 feet out, five to 10 feet out. So we're probably now 10 feet from it. And it looks like it's probably 20 foot tall, 20 foot wide. And it's kind of turning really, really slow, really slow. I wouldn't have seen it turning if it, and the shape of it, if it hadn't have been for these lights on each point. So there were a blue light and a green light, but I cannot remember what the other colour light was that, that that one there. I just, I can't see it. I can't get it in me. I can't, I just can't see it. So I've got the blue, the green. I, I really can't get that one. And if it weren't for them lights, I wouldn't have noticed, I wouldn't even have noticed it. But then I start seeing the shape of it. So it's like, think of a propeller blade. It, it's that. It's, it's deathly silent. It's that kind of shape, light on each side of it. And a, 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 it looked black. But when you look at this centre, which has got a round centre in it, it's like, a, you know, just some of this place there. I could never put a name to how black that centre was until somebody, years ago, come up with the van der Black. Yeah? Now I can say it with that, it was more that how deep that black was. I, you know, and, and, and I thought that other thing were black, but no, this, this centre bit was black. Well, this thing's upturned, is it? It's upturned. I don't know whether there's a back to it. I don't know. It, it could be way back. You know? In terms of what people think is a saucer. It wasn't as... Yeah, it wasn't yeah. It, it, it was... It was yeah. Can you imagine a saucer? Flat. Yeah, upright. Upright. Turning. Yeah, silent. Totally silent. I could hear me breathing. And slightest movement. If a leaf kind of moved under my foot, you know, you could hear it. And so the whole... Everything, Everything was, silent. was silent, totally silent, except for my breathing. And at points, I remember hearing my heartbeat. And what's your mate doing at this point? She, she's just like, I remember looking at it, but everything at this point was starting to slow down. It was becoming, you know, and everything's like slowing down. And I remember kind of turning away, you know, like you turn like that. But it was like that, you know. And her face, her eyes, are that white. It was like as if I wasn't used to what I was seeing. Because I didn't... I know that my expression and the way that I looked at her, want her, how she was feeling, because I wouldn't have looked at her otherwise, would I? You know what I mean? Because I kind of looked at her. And her eyes were so big and wide and she looked terrified. And next minute, she's at that side of me. It was like switch, she's there. You know what I mean? She hadn't walked round me, she hadn't walked in front, she's there. To the left of me. And I looked again that way. And she's bathed in a blue light. I'm bathed in a blue light because I've gone like that, but everything's slow motion. And I've looked again and nothing else is lit up around us. I remember it because I'm, I'm kind of gone. And, you know, you've got leaves at siding, everything, and there's nothing else that is lit up with this blue light. So you're isolated in this light? In this light, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think 
it was a, her face expression that said, this is not right. It didn't click. It, it's weird because I'd, I, I would have thought I'd have clicked straight away. But it was her face expression that made me snap. Do you know what I mean? And, and bring back. Could it snap you out of it? Yeah. And I've looked at her and I've kind of gone, effing run. You know what I mean? And I remember grabbing top of her arm. So I remember my right arm grabbing her right arm. You know what I mean? And, and I've spun around, but everything's slow down. Slow, you know. <laughs> and I've, we kind of set off running. She's still got this gay look about her. Like, she, unbelievable what she's looking at. And as we're running, I remember, you know, she's kind of there at this, this, you know, because we've obviously turned round. And I remember running and it's just getting slower and slower and it feels like I'm going in at ground, you know. It's really weird and then boom, I'm at bottom of the street. On your own? On my own. I don't... It was like, there were two shops at bottom of the street. There were a butcher's and off license. I don't even, I, all I remember is I was there. I, I don't remember getting there. I don't remember, I don't remember all. I just remember being at that position and walking round corner up here. And I remember kids playing out on the street. They were all playing. And then I heard one of the kids or a couple of them saying, she's here, she's here, Paula's here, she's here. And I'm walking up and I'm thinking, oh, are they having a party? Whatever had just taken place in them woods is now not there at this moment. You know what I mean? It's gone, I don't remember it. And so I remember kind of coming halfway up straight and kids are going, oh, you're in trouble, you're in trouble now. And I remember, as I'm coming up the street, there's a, a PC Milner stood at my door with my nan. And my nan's got her hands on hips, you know what I mean? And I comes up and they're all waiting at bottom. It's, you know, waiting up. I'm thinking I'm going to get arrested. I'm going to prison, me. You know, I'm 12 years old. I'm going to prison. I don't know what I've done. You know what I mean? It starts crying because I'm thinking, oh, I'm, I'm in trouble for somewhere. Not thinking, Polly, you've just been at effing woods. But it's only when my nan said, where have you been? Where have you been? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I couldn't say I've been at woods. I'd have got a right hiding. You know what I mean? At this point, I'm not knowing what time it is. I'm thinking it could be like maybe quarter to nine, nine o'clock, you know? And... It was PC Milner that said, do you realise what time it is? Do you realise you've upset your grandma? Do you realise, you know what I mean? Do you know what time it is? I went, no. And it's five to midnight. It's five to midnight. And I wasn't concerned about it. It meant nothing to me, did the time. I was more concerned thinking I'm going to go to prison, you know, for something I don't know what I've done, you know. And my nan's saying, where have you been, where have you been? You know, and I'm, I can't say that I've been at Woods. I can't say. And then it clicked and I thought, I can't tell her. Don't tell her. Don't. And it was like, as if someone said, do not tell her, do not tell her, do not. But it was not me that was saying in my words, do not tell her. It were a deep, it were a deep voice in that core. You know what I mean? Don't tell her. I couldn't. And... I was just traumatised at door. And it was my nan that said, kind of moved her arm out at work because she will not let me in. And I've gone in and I've gone straight upstairs. I don't know what happened after that. I really don't know about Because I, I remember pretending to be asleep. You know what I mean? That That's it. I just remember pretending to be asleep and my nan coming up. Blanket over my head. But you're not questioning me anymore, you know. But next day, it, it's like nobody talked about it. I got up, I thought, well, I'm going to have to get up at some point. 
Nobody talked about it. Nobody said a thing. And I thought, well, where's my mate? Where, where's my mate who'll come with me? And I rung her up and I said, can we meet up? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I said, we met up down road. And I said, well, what happened last night? What time, what time did we get home? You know, because I'm thinking, have I just dreamt all this? Have I... And she went, I just remember walking on my street and going in house. You know, two strides to a door and she's in house. And I wanted to say to her, do you remember that thing that we saw? And I couldn't say it. I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to ask her about it. But after then, as friendship started going downhill, we didn't see each other as much and, you know. And have you ever met her since? Or got mm -mm. Asked about, you, you, no? No. You spoke to her? No. Would you, if you? Probably, yeah. Yeah, but I think it'd be a bit awkward. You know, I don't even know where she lives now anyway. I know oh, she doesn't live oh. down there now. Did she, but... did she get home at the same time? No. She, she said it, it were about quarter to nine, ten past nine or something. Between that and that, when she got home, yeah. But that was the thought that I had when I were here. Think, oh, it's only quarter to nine. So even she had a missing time element then? Mm -hmm. But she's got home before me. Yeah. You know... What, three hours before me? You know what I mean? So where have I been? And out of the, obviously, from the bird up until now, there must have been occasions where you've mentioned it to your mum or your nan. No, or... no, I didn't need so to they... mention it to my nan because my nan were like me. So do you <clears> think <throat> that she never made anything of it because she knew or had an idea of what was Yeah. Asking? Uh, Did yeah. You learn that later on? Yeah, I learnt it later on of, of an incident I had, yeah, with my nan, yeah. A shared incident? Yeah. Well, so, you could say that, yeah, yeah. She were at door and I was stood at, out, basically on a roof. UFOs right in front of me, yeah. You were on a roof? I, I, yeah, so this is, I'll bring you into this and now. There's a mill at the bottom of the street, right? The mill recently got burnt down but the chimney is still there so if you got to have a look you see the chimney well the, there were a, a big mill over the wall and now i've gone to bed this just ordinary night i've gone to bed and next minute i'm stood on the roof of the mill okay and I'm stood in front of a big light. I mean, nose to nose. And this, this light, I'll have to stand up, and this light was that, like that, you know? And I'm like that to it. Um, I could use, this is where I learned that even though I'm looking directly at this light, it's, it's a bright light, but it's not blinding. I'm, I'm just, you know... And this is where I learnt to use my peripheral view just as much as I can looking forward. And I can see this light and I can see the next light and the next light. And like colours of these lights that I've, I can't even say what they are because they don't have them here. Some of them they do, you know, you've got your purples, you've got a beige colour you've got, you know what I mean? But some of these colours, uh, they're not here. They're not here. They're out of our spectrum. And I'm stood there and I remember looking, even though my eyes are there, I'm looking up there with my peripherals, just as, just as good. And I remember my nan coming out at door and she's calling Cat. And she couldn't go... Ch -ch -ch -ch. She could only go, tch, 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 tch. And I remember laughing internally, not out loud, but, you know, internally laughing on my hands, trying to call it cat. And I watched her watching the craft that I'm stood outside of. So she's here, I'm down there, but I'm watching down, looking at her, watching the craft. 
And I remember a, a man walking on the bottom of the street, so I'm still new to my peripheral, he's walking on, he's drunk out of his head. I remember him lighting a cigarette and kind of swaying about, and I was still a bit laughy a bit inside, and he's gone out of you. Next minute, I wake up. I'm in my bed. I thought, oh, that would have been a dream. I comes downstairs and my nan said, oh, you'll never guess what I saw last night. Boom, it hit me. And I'm like, what? I had to say what, because I didn't say I know. You know what I mean? I didn't want to say I know. I went, what did you see, nan? And where that breakfast bar is there, where my nan used to sit in her chair, far old that were there. And she said, oh, I seen the most beautiful flying saucer. And I was like, I wanted to cry because I was happy that I had somebody there that had, she you know, it. yeah, yeah. And I wanted to say, Nan, I saw you coming out at door. And I said, where were it, where were it? You know, just tell me where it was. And I started panicking then. And she said, it were at bottom of at mill and it were turning, it were turning. I'm thinking, well, I was stood in front of this light. How were it turning? But she said it were turning. And I said, what colours were it? She said, the round lights, beautiful colours. I can't tell you, beautiful colours. But she couldn't tell me colours. I'm stood in front of a solid light, but she said it was turning. Flat. Yeah. So this is, so you're on the... On the, on the roof. The, on the roof, looking straight at this thing. I'm um, using my peripheral. And it's wide, this thing, how big? Oh, I can't even say how big it was, but if, I'm, if I've got this one light in front of me, I can see that light and that light. So I, 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 I don't know because I don't know what's around that corner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm only seeing it from nose to nose. Do you get what I mean? So. And this is side on this thing. This is flat. This yeah. Is flat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Anne's telling me this. Well, I run upstairs, burst out crying. I'm thinking, she knows, she knows. She knows. And that's when I realised and I thought my Nan's like me. Thrust up family art. Did you speak about it? No. No. Just that. That was it. I didn't want to say it away. Again, which but, I should have done. But it's not uncommon, that, is it? In, in families where this is going on. Yeah. Having that mutual awareness of something. But yeah, she knew what I was. Yeah. She knew what I was. Yeah, because she sees spirit and so do I. And we were the only two that sees them. Yeah. So she knew. It's like I remember her telling me, I never knew my granddad. He died when my mum was 12. And he was from like a gypsy background. And she said, I remember when your granddad were going to die the night before. And this, she's got the curtains open a bit like you do. And she says, and she says this star in distance, really just pinpoint, she knew it wasn't right. She knew it, this star wasn't right, whatever it was, wasn't right. They don't have the words, they didn't have the words then like they do now, as such as a laser. Do you get what I mean? She said it was like a, a, a pencil. And she said, and this light's got closer and closer, and as it's getting closer, it's got blue. It's a blue light. And she said, it's only, it's only tiny. And next minute, it's right outside window. And it's gone zoop, right to my granddad's forehead, which we would call a laser now. And she looked at my granddad in bed and she knew it's, it's going to die. Yeah. But she, I don't remember what she said after that, if you know what I mean. I remember the bit where, you know, she said, I, I knew that we're going to die the day after. And, but I don't know when, whether she said, you know, laser just zapped his head and gone, or it was there a while. I, I don't remember because to me that bit wasn't important, so it unabsorbed. It was just that having this laser in, and my nan saying that she knew we were going to die the day after. Yeah. 
So she was like me. So it was happening then, you know. So if I'll talk about the ones down the garden path here. Um, I remember it. This one I actually remember at 25 year old. It's done, it's come back. I was 12 and I know that I was 12. I knew exactly what clothes I were wearing. I knew my grandma's coat. Everything was 12 year old. And I just knew how old I was. And I remember being stood in here and we had a big, you know, one of them tables that open up right big, you know. And it were a Sunday, and I only know it were a Sunday because my nan had best china out, you know, and like strawberries and carnation cream and stuff like that, and teapot were out and everything. So um, I remember my mum, they were all kind of sat there, and I'm never fit in with them anyway, so... They were all sat there, stood there, one of them were messing about and doing something that stood up. And it felt like it wasn't real. Do you get what I mean? In an environment that, like, like a pane of glass in front of me. So it, it, it's muffled at this, do you get what I mean? Like being in a bit of a fish tank. And now I look back and I know that, I, well, I, I'm not 99% sure that that image we're putting me there. It wasn't actually real, you know what I mean? Um, probably to make me feel a bit better, a bit safer, a bit more comfortable. And I was stood just there by the window at that side. And we had blinds, these white plastic blinds. And these were all talking and... I don't know, I just stood there. I don't remember what I was thinking or out like that. And then I remember kind of looking through lots of the blinds there and I'm, I'm looking towards the path here. And I see what I thought were three kids in my garden, you know, probably eight, nine year old, but looking at the size of the, the frame of them now, you know, small frame. Couldn't tell you height because it looked like they were kneeling down. And um, nothing made me click at that moment. I just remember that I'm thinking, this, why is there three kids in my garden? And they were really, really angry. How dare they come into my garden? You know what I mean? And next minute, I, re I was thinking, why are they all dressed the same? Why, why, why have they got, they've got these robes on? And it looks like Essien sack, potato sack. And they've got, it's got bell. And this is like sunlight, you know, it's daytime. Glorious sun. And they've got these bell sleeves and these hoods up. But the hood's really big, so it kind of droops over at the shoulders. And every one of them has got like um, a rope tied to the left. It's like a beigey, goldy coloured rope. And they're playing with a red Infidelity portable record player. Yeah. One of them has got the stylus and it's pricking its finger up, down. It re everything's repetitive, what they're doing. The other one's got the slick mat and it's going like this. And the other one's got the plug. And it's kind of looking at it and then it does that. And then look at it, it's same motion over and over again. And this, why a record player, I don't know. It's like it's, they're examining this record player. Now I look back and I think, I, I don't even think I were here. I think I were on some, some sort of craft and they're operating on some sort of machinery. You know what I mean? I think they've just put that image in my head to make me feel comfortable. And I'm like, I did, it didn't click at that moment what I'm looking at. I'm, these, I couldn't see the faces because the hoods are that low down and they're going like that with finger. It was then that I noticed, just forgetting 
what they have on, even though I know what they've got on, it won't unusual. It should have been, but it won't. And then I've got this, I'm looking at the fingers and they've got really short, neat fingernails, right? And they're like a, a grey, they're like something's got burnt charcoal sort of charred, that colour, like a grey, not black, but like a grey, like, like the charcoal -y burnt sort of thing. And then the, it, it kind of, I remember seeing fingers then and they were really wrinkly, bony. I remember that that and this bit protruded a lot more and they were long. I couldn't tell you if it had a thumb, but I know there were definitely four fingers, so one of them could have been a thumb. Do you know what I mean? And it was then that I thought, this... These aren't people, you know what I mean? After seeing the, you know, wouldn't Rob t say it all, you know what I mean? Why, why the fingers and the fingernails? But it was just that, you know? And I was like, oh, oh. And I was saying, Mum, I was trying to shout my gran and my mum, you know what I mean? Come and look, come and look at these kids in garden. Come on, quick, quick, quick. And it's like they couldn't hear me. They couldn't see me. I wasn't there. You know, they're just carrying on and I'm getting really frustrated. And I thought, how am I going to get a better view of these kids? I know, I'll go to Letterbox. And I, I go to Letterbox, because these aren't taking any bloody notice. I go to Letterbox and it had like a spring on back. So I had to kind of, kind of get my fingers under it and pull it up. And, but hold it there because it really snapped. If, if you let go of it, it'd snap your fingers, you know. And I remember lifting it up and I'm gone right close up to it. So I'm like this looking through a letterbox. And this one that were facing the door, because there's two facing opposite and one facing the door, put its head up. And I couldn't believe what I'd seen. It was just, it were awful. It were awful. The, the, it wasn't the two black eyes that I first saw. It was the skin tone. And it was like a tanny brown colour. But it also had these... The wrinkles kind of went round there. And then they'd come down here. And prominent round mouth. I, I don't remember seeing that bit much of the head because I think Ud might have covered that. Do you get what I mean? And then I just, then I see the black eyes, really horrible, horrible. I mean, I've seen the black eyes in greys, but these were, these are just gross. And it, next minute, it, it's kind of there and then it's there. So it, it's, I've not seen it move. It's gone doof, doof. And it's right behind me, other side, other side, looking at me straight through the letterbox, eyes like that. And instantly, I felt sick. I felt dizzy. I just thought I was gonna gonna just puke. You know what I mean? And and faint. And I it, it was just such a horrible, horrible feeling. And then just I could feel myself kind of going, 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 gone. And that's all I remember about that. So potentially you're on the table and this, do you think this whole, that scenario has been projected yeah. into your mind? Yeah, I do now, but I didn't then. At the time, at 25, when I remember that particular incident, um, I thought it was just something I remember in from age 12, you know, and that's how it actually played out. But... As I've got older and I've had more time to think about it, I think they've put a projection there to make me feel safe and more comfortable. Uh, so what? you looking through the letterbox is the equivalent of you being on the table and looking around and realising what, what's going on? Yeah, I think so, like yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't, th even th I, I don't think I were here. Like I said, when it first started, it felt like I were in like a fishbowl looking out.
And, you know, especially when I'm trying to attract their attention, go to a window and have a look. And it's like, the, you know, <laughs> the two ways you can look at it. The whole record player, sometimes the scenarios that I hear about and people tell me about, it's almost like they haven't quite mastered the art of blagging, have they? <laughs> they can't quite get it right. A bloody really record cool. player. You know what I mean? A record player. Of all things that they could have and they wanted to put this record player there. Do, do you know what I mean? And have you ever seen this record no, before? No, no. It's a red Fidelity, red and cream. And it has a lid that comes off, a red and cream. I can see it now. I can see it. So that then you've got the, you've got this, the tube insertion, which doesn't sound yeah. pleasant. No. Right, I'd gone to bed, gone to sleep. I'm 12 year old and it's like and now I'm on like a metal table but it's it's not long enough for a table but it's too big for a bench or a two seat you know what I mean and it's metal and it doesn't appear to be attached to anything and um, there's this light coming on me, but I remember in the dark, darkness beyond it. But I don't know where the light's coming from either, because I'm, my head's down like that, and my hands. But I'm, I'm sat, I'm, I'm basically I'm sat right that, yeah, right. And I, uh, all I can, my eyes are open. All I can see is what I'm looking at there. So I can see this bit, my legs, my feet there. I can see that darkness is over there, over there, that I can also see light coming down. It's not like it, the light stops and then it's darkness. It's kind of suffused into darkness. And the, I can feel something there to my side of me. I, can, I, can, I know there's something going on there. But I just can't, I ain't got the strength in me to, to kind of move, to look. I'm, I'm so weak. And then I feel something going in my lower back. And it doesn't hurt. It's not, it's not like you could imagine something, something going in. You'd, yeah. you'd feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it, you know, it's under kitchen coccyx, you bloody know about it. It wasn't like that. It was like, if you imagine, well, you've heard of it, you know, people getting stabbed and they don't, f they don't feel it. It's only when they start bleeding or the pain after that they know there's something wrong. But it's like, you know, knife going through a cake. So I didn't feel what was going on. But I, I the only reason why I... I felt what was going on because of the movement here. You know what I mean? I could feel fingers or whatever. But I could also feel on the inside of me as well. So some, I, it didn't hurt, but I could see, feel it through me. And with all the strength that I had, I was thinking, what's going on? The head's still down. What's going on? And... Um, I remember putting, you know, as the strength that I, little strength that I had kind of going around back, feeling something really sticky and clammy and cold and now and again it might be warm and so bits of it, I presume, were warm, whatever it was, and other bits were really cold and sticky. I remember it's sticky. It's, and then something brought my hand back and put it, on that hand and I could see the hand but at that moment I'm not taking any notice of what this hand looks like they've just brought it back and put it really gently on top of me of their hand and then I could feel it again and I'm thinking no you know what I mean and I, I want to know what this is and so I get both hands now and I've, I've gone round really slow with all little energy I've got and I'm like this you know head down Next minute, two hands onto mine. But it's not like they're touching me. It, it's, I know that they're that far off my hands. I don't need to touch me, you know. And they brought them back and crossed them over at the same position before, really gently. It's just, 
it, oh God, it's so hard to explain. And then it's like, I've woke up, I've woke up. And I've said to my nan who's in next bed, I'm gonna go to the toilet, you know, I'm off to the toilet, oh, you know. And she says, oh, you were moving about a lot last night, blah, 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 whatever she was saying. And as I've stood up, she said, I think you better go to the toilet, which I've just told her previously, I am anyway. Just go to the toilet. And she says, I think you better go to the toilet. Why? You know, why, why are you repeating questions, sort of, you know, repeating what I've just said? I think you've come on, basically. So, how blood got right up here? So it's all the way up my back. All the way up my back. I haven't come on, right? Nothing there, nothing at all. They're a little stool, a little kind of a, one of them plastic kind of stool things. And we had this like horrible plastic uh, wet mirror wall and you put your toothpaste and you, you know what I mean? It was that. And then yeah, I remember it being right pale blue colour and bath were pale blue and that. And then um, I kind of turned round and I lifted my nightdress up like that. And I remember seeing three scratches from the top of my spine there all the way down. Now I used to bite my nails right down, right down till the blade. The only reason why I stopped doing it is because they went septic, it was that bad. And I didn't bite them. So there was no way I could do that. And even if I tried it now, there's no way I could. I can't do it. And it's three scratches all the way down my back. Now these scratches had healed, but they still had the bloody things at each side of them, you know, like dried blood, yeah. but brownie colour. So look like old wounds. And then I've kind of gone on my tiptoes and I'm like out trying to look and I see a little hole in my back. Probably, probably a bit smaller than my finger. But I remember in then that when I've gone like that with my hands to feel what was going on, I felt this tube thing, but it felt a lot bigger in my hand. But if you think about it, when you pick some up, your hands exaggerate the size. Anyway, your fingertips exaggerate the size of things in comparison to what you actually see. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. So I've seen this hole and I dared not put my finger in it. I know it's there. I can see it. And there's blood all the way around it. But it's dried blood, not like this where it's... It's gone um, like a brownie colour blood. This is dried blood out. Is this above your coccyxness? Yeah, it's about my coccyx, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then it all kind of floods back to me. That instant when I say that, floods back to me. Pulls my nightdress down. I go, I think it was a look on my face. Like, well, you know, what happened last night, you know, and... I don't, come on, you know, I mean, I, I mean, Nan said, oh, you know, do, do you need any protection or out like that, you know? And I went, no, no, like that, no, no, it's all right. So I didn't tell her otherwise. And that was just that, really. It was just, it was horrible, horrible. So this tube? That I felt, yeah. Is it still there? Do it, is it, do you want I don't know. I don't even know how big it was. Like I said, when your fingers touch something, it exaggerates size, doesn't it? So the, ch the hole was smaller than, probably about that small. Yeah. yeah. But when I felt it with my fingers, it felt a lot bigger. Right. But do you think you, you now knew? Yeah and no. I mean, yeah, she did, but... I didn't tell her, did I, again? So after what she's told me about stuff happening in war and balls of light coming through the house and it went to every room and then went back out and the laser and my granddad's... 
yeah. She knew, uh, but I, I think she, she didn't want to question me because I was so little. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is that the ball of light? No, that, no, that's my ball of light. We're at, I welded 25 there. 29. Right, so I've had that, them few years gap now. Yeah, 29. Right, that one is me and my friend, I used to live over the side of the street. And it was a bit, it was, over, it was very overcast. There was no sun coming through. So there was no way it could have been a reflection or out like that. It had been raining, but like I said, no, no sun cap caused a reflection, but it would dry when it happened. And I had this fireplace, and, and it took, for some reason, it took me mum five years to build, but it only it went to about a year. And it were arched stone, Yorkshire stone, and it were arched. And it had a wooden, like a wooden seat thing at each side of it. Well, they weren't seats, so we just knew to sit and put a cushion down, sit on them. And so window is there, right? And my friend sat at that side, I'm sat at this side. And we're talking away, we drop kids off at school. And I'm talking away, so my daughter, if I'm 29, she'd have been four, so yeah. She was four year old, my daughter. She sat there, we're sat here. And window's there. And we're just talking away. And I remember, and we're da, 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 And I looked at her face and it was like, you know, like, and I thought, she's looking, she's looking at me. And I kind of went that way, you know, like, she's looking at. So I followed her eye line. And all I saw with this, you know, top of window up there, it's come through that like top bit there. Yeah. And all I'm seeing is like, a white swirling ball of light. And, and, but, it, but at this point, it's only small, right? But it's not coming from the outside. It's like as if it's just appeared at glass and come in. There's nothing in the outside bit. But no time to think, no, you know, get up, go examine it, nothing. It happened in seconds. And it's come now coming down towards me. It, it, it's a tube, like a, a, it's retractable, basically. It's going, coming, 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 coming. But this tube is, is every time it moves, it's, it's got a band around it. So it's expanding this band. And I could see this ball of light in the centre of it. And it's coming down and it gets to here above my head and I'm looking up at it. I come, no time to talk, nothing, this is seconds. I'm looking at it and as I'm looking right above it, it's, it's there, bottom of it's there. And I see this tube at my peripheral retracting back, but this leaving this ball of light here and it's swirling and moving like it's alive. It was beautiful. And then all these little tiny sparks were coming off it. They weren't landing or out because they were so tiny. They were just pop, 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 coming off it. And it's moving. And I'm just like, I just mesmerised at this thing right above my head. And it's just, it's like as if it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point it's, it's like a football size now. And it's like, it's just there. And the next minute it's gone really quick and this tube's come back down. It's kind of there on the edge of this tube and the tube retracts back. It's gone. And my friend is sat there and she says, what the fuck with that? What the fuck with that? And she stood up and she, I'm not fucking staying here and she shoots out at door. And I just couldn't do it. I was just sat there laughing. I'm not sure whether I was laughing at what had just taken place or our whole scenario. You know what, what I mean? What was the tube made of? What was the light? I light. It was light. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, so she's, and I'm like, <laughs> this is deep, she's laughing. 
it wasn't even a funny scenario though. I, I, it might have been nerves, it might have been energy that it gave off, you know what I mean? But it was, it was so mad. So I goes outside, I'm not effing coming in your house again. Every time I come here, something weird happens. I like this, right? So anyway, I kind of calms her down and I said, right, I said, well, seeing as we're outside, we might as well go to, which what co-op, it's now a Tesco. We might as well go to a co-op, you know what I mean, get some bit. Anyway, goes in at co-op, and you remember them old fridges that used to be like that, they used to go on all the way down aisle. If a kid went in and the, you know, legs in air. And they had a metal, it had a metal strip across it. But as soon as I put my hand on this metal strip, it was really static loud. I mean, loud. It wasn't just a little zzz. It was really, really loud. And I went like that and I took my hand off it. She went, what the fuck are you doing? And I went, I don't, I don't know. I said, I just put my hand on it. And so she went like that, nothing happens. I do it, it goes, Ugh. So I thought, right. So I went, me being me, gets, goes, walks to the other end of it again and puts my hand on it all the way down at the bottom of the aisle. And it did it all the way. Comes back up, all the way back up. A really loud static. I had assistants coming round. What is that noise? They're trying it. How are you doing that? I'm going, I don't know. I really don't know. And it was just me that were giving up all this static. So anyway, eventually I got bored of it. So I thought, all right, I'm going to go pay for whatever I've got. And now it's kind of coming up towards Christmas. So they've got like um, pyramids of Rosie's chocolate tins stacked up. They can't do it now, can I? I don't think they can do that. It needs to be like a pyramid thing. And I'm about two foot away from it and Q's kind of there. And as I got to it, nobody else is there. Nobody's near these chocolate tins. I was just thinking to myself, oh, shall I get one for Christmas or whatever? And just as I thought it, the entire lot just went, it was like somebody had booted them and gone, Shh, and they all, from top to bottom, psh, all over, all over. It's like as if I'd gone, psh, with all this energy, and all the tins are gone, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's like, what have you fucking done? Yeah. Weird. And, and was there anything at that time, was there anything going on in your life? No. No, no. But that was unusual, that yeah. ball of light. Yeah. So there was nothing... I'm just trying to think of a scenario of what it was actually doing. I, I don't know, but I know damn well it gave off that for me in order to have that much power to cause that fridge to make such a racket. And with your friend here as well, that's even more yeah. unusual to, for them to put on a public show. It, oh, yeah, yeah. But they have with Kev, with Psycho Kev. Um, and also my friend when we were in Jodie Woods. But I had a lot of static build up for about two weeks after that. So everything I touched, like a car door or whatever, zzz, 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 every, every person that I touched had the, yeah. What, what are these black Cubans? Red, okay. Red Indian, right. That one was, it was like, um, I've never heard of black cubes, never. And, I couldn't figure it out. What it was, it was a dream that I had. But I think there's ET mixed in there as well. So it's a dream that there's two instances, in fact, there's three instances of black cubes. Yeah, there's a black cube, red Indian, black cube alien, then the black monolith. Black monolith is down the back. Yeah, yeah. Black monolith is down back. Anyway, so the black cube is, I've gone to this dream state, gone to bed. Next minute, I'm in like a village, a uh, really um, medieval kind of village. There's a church and it's got a kind of a thatched roof, but it's a really, really tall. You know, I've never been anywhere where there's thatched this or thatched that, but it's got this thatched roof. But... It's people walking about, like in, in the medieval times, but there's also normal people walking about mixed in with 
But it's like as if none of them can see each other, none of the timelines can meet. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's when it's like ghosts living with ghosts, you know, that you're crossing over. And my daughter, I remember these two boys being on that stroof. Oh, some of them, they had scaffolding up round this church, right? So this was this timeline. So they've got scaffolding up round this church because they're fixing it. But at the very top of the scaffolding, there's a there's a little of a walkway. And I see these two boys on this church. And I was thinking, oh my God, they're going to die. If they fall through that roof, they're going to die. And then I was, I can't, it was some, some boyfriend I was with, I don't even know. I don't even know. And I was with this boyfriend. And he's got kids. And... I, and I said, oh, he said, oh, go over there, whatever, whatever. And the next minute I looks round and Hannah, my daughter, is not with me. And I looks up and she's on this church roof. And I'm thinking, get down, get down, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to get up these ladders. But as I'm trying to get up these ladders, they kept slipping down. I don't know how that works. It's like as if I'm going up, but they're going down as I'm going up. And then... Uh, I just remember this firework going off. I remember these lads having some rockets and this firework went off. And next minute, the whole thing is in flames. Now I'm walking down some sort of place. I've come out of this medieval bit. I'm in some sort of place where there's like just semi-detached houses. But it's like more of a 1940s feel to it. And I, I see these loads of these, I'm, I'm crying my eyes out because I know that I've lost my daughter. You know, I'm, I'm like, where, you know, where is she? She's got to be somewhere. I knew she was dead, that life, but I knew that she were also somewhere else. You know what I mean? And I'm really panicking. And I see these children playing in this garden in this semi-detached house. And... I was like, I was shouting, Anna, Anna, come on, I'm here, Anna, come here. But it's like, they couldn't hear me because they're not in this dimension. And then this red Indian woman comes and she's got all the feathers and, you know, I've never been interested in out like that. It's, it's like, you know, pyramids and stuff. I've never been interested in it. It doesn't appeal to me. But she's got all this, you know, all these fancy feathers on and whatever you and she's got these two plaques coming down here. And she says, you can't, you can't take her, you can't take her back like this. But it's all like telepathic. You can't take her back. And I'm going, why? I want my daughter. And I'm really screaming at her, give me my fucking daughter back. You can't, you can't take her. She's a, she's, we're looking after her now. And she ends with this cube, black cube. And... Well, where that has come from, I've no idea, but it's co connection as well with the ET stuff that I have. So it's the first black cube I've ever been given. And I opened it, I took this black cube and I opened it and it's got golden pearls in it. And it, I, I don't know what significance it has, these golden pearls. But it, it's there, this black cube's there and... I don't remember how else after after that, do you get what I mean? But in one of the scenarios where I'm at Ann Andrews and the little grey gives me the black cube, it's got knowledge in it. So it's a message of some sort? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. My black cube. I don't know. But the black monolith over the... Um, it's now a curry shop, a uh, curry takeaway shop, which is down the back. You better see it from where you sat. And I was stood at top of the street. And it was kind of... One minute it was light like this, next minute it's dark. And I remember turning at side and there's this black oblong, just perfect, perfect oblong hovering by this door and it's it's got flames coming out of it but out at sides 
but you could still see the sides, if you know what I mean. So these flames are coming from nowhere. And I don't know what this thing is. It's just what I call a monolens. It's black, it's, it's oblong shape. And it's emitting flames from the sides of it. Don't ask me what that is. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> Head near the gate. Head near the gate, yeah. Right, quarter past six one morning. I wakes up, gets ready to go to work. And I thought, right, I'll put some washing out. Nice day, like today. Put my washing out. I don't put my best stuff out because they'll get nicked. So, all crap stuff go on washing line. And nobody's about. You can hear birds tweeting, that's about it, you know. Now I've got a, what, five foot, six foot, it's not five foot, six foot fence, six and a half foot fence. But where you open, you, you, you pull the latch up and to get out, so it kind of opens out into alleyway, which is just there. Um, but the gate bit where you go out is kind of warped. It's weathered at the bottom, so it sticks out. So there's about that much of a gap between the fence and the... And get, and then um, I dropped this peg on the floor. I'm just putting it out, and one peg fell on the floor. I'm like, fucking hell, like, it's right. So I'm hoping that whatever's on the line doesn't drag on the floor now. So I, I kind of bends over and picks this peg up, and I remember seeing something just there. It's there, it's there, and it's round. And I went like that, as, and it's a little grey looking at me through the gate. But it's so low down at ground, there's no way it could bob down or lean over. It'd have to lie flat, unless they can move like we can't. But like, you know, at 16, when it, with the way that it positioned when it run, but it'd have to lie flat in order for it to bob round like that and be looking at me through the gate. And, I was like, I was still, you know, you're just like mesmerised and you're like, oh, is, am I actually been seeing this? You know, and I'm, I'm like out looking at it. So it's like, for me, a set of that lamp, you know? And then next minute, I just seen big bald head and, and eyes. And next minute, I, put, I thought, bastard. I was anger, I felt real anger going through me, right? So... I kind of put my peg on the thing right quick. I thought, right, I'm going after you, you bastard. Do you know what I mean? So I get out of the gate. But as I'm kind of messing about with this peg, I could hear little pit of pat of footsteps like slapping really fast down back alleyway. I thought, well, I know it's gone down. But if it hadn't, is it round the gate? Because like I said, my gate opens that way. I'd have to go, so which I did first. I thought, I'm going to catch you before you catch me, you bastard. Do you know what I mean? And a bob's round, it's not there. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going like that in all gardens. And then I comes up the other side where shops are, back at shops. But they've got like steps going down in uh, the basement. I thought, I'm not looking to go down steps, round corner. There's no way I'm going down there. No way. I'd have to be tooled up, you know what I mean? <laughs> to go. And I, I thought, so by this time, then it's time to go to work. I thought, right, get in, get me. But I remember that day well because I was in that much of a flummox and a panic thinking I'm going to get this, I need to go to work. I've gone out of the front door and left the back door open all day and the gate, yeah, and nobody went in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was little edit gate, yeah. yeah. Great Yarmouth Grey. Great Yarmouth Grey. So me and my boyfriend at the time were gone on holiday. Um, his kids, I've only got one. He's got two kids. And we'd like sleep most at day and then get up because we were like, we'd go to the beach, sky watch or whatever. Anyway... No, really happened, but I remember he had these uh, figurines of um, 
little grey smoking joints and I, I wouldn't let him have them out. I mean, at that point, I couldn't even look at a book with a grey in it. It had freaked me out. I did, I'd throw the book away rather than look at it or have it in my house. And he had these figurines, but I wouldn't let him, you know what I mean, he'd either get rid of them or put them somewhere where I can't see them because it would just freak me out. Anyway, so we'd gone. I don't even know why he bought them. I, he bought them before he met me. But yet, he won in, uh, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, he didn't know anybody that only me like, like that. And then we'd play hide and seek in middle at night. I mean, caravan park were massive. So middle at night, the, the lights of the caravan park would be dimmer. But I think they worked on like solar energy sort of thing because it'd get a lot dimmer as night went on. And so we kind of split up into two two groups, you know. You know, he'd take his two or I'd take mine or I'd take one of his and he'd take... You know what I mean? So two groups, start one end at Caravan Park, or the other, we'd have a point of reference where we'd go, right, you know, we'd have to meet up, hide and seek. And as I'm, I remember splitting up from group, and I don't know how it happened, but as I remember, there's a one at little street, one at little camp lights here, um, caravan lights, and it was really dim, but I, it was still giving that shadow, casting that shadow. And as I'm running to get to Tig Point, this thing cut in front of me. I mean, I mean, I'm, it, well, I, I, what I thought was a shadow. So it looked long, you know what I mean? It, well, it was cast in that way with this shadow. And so, because I remember it light being there, so it was there, but it looked really long. And I, oh, like this, I thought I was going to trip over a shadow. Yeah, so I kind of halted like this. And then it's kind of, halt, these things kind of stopped there. And it's a little grey, it's a little grey. I fucking shot, you know, it, it was like, whoom, that way. And I'm shouting and I'm shouting, I can't remember his name now, I'm shouting and shouting. But as I'm starting to run, I could see that one going that way and it's gone round back of a caravan. And I've gone back in and he's going, what's up with you? I said, someone's just cut in front of me. I didn't want to say what. I knew what it was and it's just cut in front of me. And uh, I said, I want to go, I want to go back in caravan, I want to go back in caravan. And I had tears in my eyes. I'm crying, I'm shaking, I'm carrying on. And it's like, I put, you know, we have curtains uh, in caravan. I put sellotape down edges so that nothing could look through. I've gone in, I've checked under, you know, you lift the bed up in the centre of the room thing. You know what I mean? I've gone like that, nothing there. Every fucking cupboard I've looked through, nothing, nothing. But th that, it cut right in front of me. Yeah, and it were only, what, three and a half, three foot, three and a half foot tall. Did you tell him what it was ever? No. 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 Was he aware of what was going on? With oh, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't tell him at full extent of what was going on. But, I yeah, I didn't. Kids with you as well, so. Yeah, I didn't want to. A good reason not to, not to mention mm. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. Number 15, the drugs. Is this the... Uh... Next star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd gone to bed. Uh, this is when I lived at number 16. I'd gone to bed and um, just ordinary night, getting from work, go to bed. And next minute... I'm floating out of my bedroom window. It's a, a bedroom height level, but a bit further out, probably about two metres out from my bedroom window. Sometimes I can see my leg, I can see my top half. Sometimes I can see my bottom leg, sometimes I can't. Kind of comes in and out of focus. <coughs> and... Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got them like that. I'm, I'm floating like that with my legs and arms crossed. And I don't feel my body weight. My body weight isn't there at all. 
and I feel comfortable. It's like as if I've been through that that many times. You know what I mean? I'm not to fear. And next minute, I'm kind of looking up top at the street. <laughs> so it's coming from that direction there. And these two little greys walk around the corner doing that cocky teenage walk, <laughs> right? Coming around the corner like that with limp and, you know, I was just laughing and laughing, not out loud. I never laugh out loud like that. It's just internal. So you probably see me as my face is dead set, but in here, it's really funny. And all I'm thinking is, they're like teenage lads when they think they're right muscly and tanned and they're just, all you see is a skinny white body and they're walking like that and limp and they're walking down the street coming this way. And I'm like, what are you doing? What on earth are you doing? So I'm watching this taking place. And one of them's constantly going, looking at me, really human, human mannerisms, do you get what I mean, where they were doing it? And I'm, I'm like, what? what are you doing? Why are you walking like that? And I think that would to put me in a more of a comfortable position, you know, the way that they're talk, uh, walking and that. So they stopped outside next door's house, which was a lad called Steve at that time, driving instructor, and it Liverpoolian lad, really strong accent, I remember him. And it's one of them's like continuously like that. And then next minute they get to this house. One of them leans over at wall like this and he's got his hand one hand on it and other like that. Yeah? Or like that, whichever way is is there. For some reason these two, they're only small, but it's managed, you know, that wall out there, it, it's a fair eye. So I, I don't know how this is managed for him to go like that. So it's got to be taller than what I thought it was. You know, it's just perspectives are wrong. And the other one starts going up the path. But be, I'll tell you a previous bit before it about the car, in a bit, well, after. Anyway, it starts going up the garden path here. And he's got, his long, but his arms look really long. They didn't look that long when they were walking down the street, but now they're like stretch Armstrong, you know what I mean? And he's started at the bottom of the door and he's gone up, up door casing all the way around, brought his hands together and then gone like that and gone back down, gone that way. He's repeated it about twice over. Now, I think that is to make sure that I'm actually watching what's going on. At the time, I just thought, oh, he's looking, just looking for something. But the way that it was just so prominent, his hands and the length of them, and like, I'm, I'm supposed to be paying attention here, so keep watching. And then it kind of puts his hand in between, I can't describe it in here, but it's like the door's there and the wall's here and he's put his hand in that bit there and he comes out with summer. He walks down the path, looks at his ET mate, who's still going like this, you know what I mean? I don't know what he had in his hand then, you know what I mean? But I knew that he'd gone like that and shown him. They set off up the street. The one that kept looking round, they were leaning on the wall coming down. It's doing exactly the same, so it's looking round like that. Up the street, off the go. Next minute, my alarm's going off, getting up for work. I don't forgot about it. It was just a funny scenario that took place. Carries on my work day. Comes home. Maybe about ten past five, five o'clock. I go upstairs. My normal routine would be go in the bathroom, get changed, put my night clothes on. I'm not going out for rest at day. Do what I have to do, go into the bedroom, sort tomorrow's clothes out. No, nope. I went straight into the bedroom and I looked out at window. 
and I see a red car coming up it with the noise of the engine that caught me because you're getting used to certain engine noises, you know. You know you're on noise that car, don't you? So you get I thought, hang on, I don't recognise that engine. I don't recognise it. It's coming up and it kind of turns round just there and it parks up right outside my house. So I have to kind of lean over a bit more in order to look at what Well I've realised it were only today that I actually this morning that I actually realised the red car with them a, a pick up, oh, come on, a little red car, pick a... <laughs> yeah, I know the one you mean, not a Picanto, uh, Chikachenko, is it? It's a, I get, no, I think it could be pick. <laughs> yeah. The other one. Yeah. yeah. Right, I think it was that. Now, before my mum died, she had a little red car. And I've only just flipping realised this. She bought it two years ago, and it was a pick a pick a pick a and it was a little... A little red picker picker, and it were exactly the same as that one out there. And I've just it reminded me this morning. I thought, fucking hell, was they showing me what she were going to get in the future? Yeah. yeah, right. So this car, one of them gets out, driver. Have you ever seen Snatch the movie yeah. where the big He's big in and he's trying to get in and out of car. It were a bit like watching that. And then a little scrawny one with walk, you know, limping ten men. And they both get out and they go and they go straight to Steve's ear. Not clicked at this minute, not clicked. The big lad, he stood there, um, on it, I'm like that. Same position, same wall. It was then I realised, and I thought, fucking hell, the grace showed me this last night. So I knew exactly what we're going to go on. So, little scrawny one, open skate, goes up path, fumbles about in wall for a bit. He didn't do all that motion with door. He fumbles about in corner for a bit. And I'm, I'm looking out of my window and I could see that it's, it's, it's where the pointing was, that where the pointing had come out. It gets what it needs to get. I see his fingers going in, pulls his bag out, goes down path, shows his mate, they both go at car. And I thought, Keen Elk Grey showed me this last night. At that moment, I'm thinking, well, why would they show, show me a drug deal? Why would they show me a drug deal? It's, no, 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 no. It's years later again that I've realised it isn't that. They're showing, I think they're showing psychic abilities there. Not a drug deal. Because I said to my mum, it might have been that night or day after, you know, two lads have been, been to Steve's. The old, I didn't tell her about the greys. I told her about the two lads that have been to Steve's. Um, is the old dodgy about him? She's gone look that she needs to work for police. She's gone and uh, you know she's she knows a lot about people. And there were a thing on at one point. It was selling cocaine. So these I think these greys were showing me what we're gonna you know far see Bill future, aren't they? So yeah, which is not the first time by the sounds of it. Sounds mm. like doing that. In their own way. Yeah. In a lot of these experiences, for whatever reason. Hmm? But you, we're not, or you're not always picking up on what that reason is. No. Yeah. No. Sometimes, years later, I might. Yeah. Like the little red car. You know what I mean? So there's little things. Little that things that are coming back years and years That's later. That's well, because I suppose there might be elements that you haven't, that you've forgot that, about. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And all that, and missing time bits as well. Okay. You know? It's funny, I can see it as you were telling it. I can, I can <laughs> see that walk, that cocky, <laughs> teenage, I'm well hard. It's like a builder, isn't it? Like a skinny, yeah, big Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that cocky walk. <laughs> and I think that was just a scenario. I don't think they're walking like that. You know, they're very robotic in the, in the stance and... They're not fluid. What's this for the Salt Woods, the cryptid? The cryptid. Well, me and Psycho Cave, we had a lot going on there. Um, it's 
suppose if it hadn't have been for him, I think I were put with him. It sounds like we're really stupid, that. I were put with him for a reason, because there were a lot going on with Psycho Cave that I, I learned. And anyway, so what we used to do was, um, we had a this little Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and we used to just take him for walks in the middle of the night and play hide and seek. I wasn't scared of them woods. There were a certain bit where I felt safe. Just that little bit where I felt safe. Rest of it, I didn't even like going in at daytime, never mind night. So it's a bit further on. And we'd take a dog for a walk. It was just getting dusk. It just starting to get dusk. And I'd got to a certain point, and this is deep in woods now, and there's a bit of a bank in here. And I remember stream being lower down, so we're like in the middle. And I remember, all I remember is like, you know, you get that feeling you're being watched, you know, and and you're like, I swear I'm being watched. And normally you're right, aren't you? It's just one of them things. And I kind of couldn't pick up where I'm, I'm like this and he's talking away. I don't know what he's on about. I just, I'm hearing it, but not listening. And I, I know that there's something there now. I know that there's something there and I've gone like that. And I sees what looks like Wolverine head <laughs> sort of thing, you know, with the um, sideburns. Yeah. Yeah. And these, now these, you know, the, ah, right, the big leaves, I don't get them in gardens, but the big leaves that you generally get in a bush in, in woods, right, big. And the covering most of, facial anywhere you know a uh, bit round here a bit there and so I'm still getting a picture of what it looks like this thing and it's eyes it's eyes are like across the team my wallpaper there that yellowy ochre and oh god like an hazel colour and it's I think that's the thing that I noticed that and the sideburn things first because these eyes look like they were glowing. They were the light colour of my shoes. These eyes look like they were glowing, but they weren't, they weren't glowing. It was the colour of them that were kind of stood out amongst these green leaves. And I remember this big brow, you know, it was like really prominent there. And normal, round eyes, round, they look more round than what they did our shape. You know what I mean? And then the nose were wider here, wider there, and these kind of long lips, long lips, sort of thing. That I don't remember seeing his body. His body might have been in full view and I wouldn't have known because I wasn't drawn to look at that. But there were a lot of coverage over his face. And I said, Kev, look, 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 like, it's, I didn't want to look again. Do you get what I mean? Because I'd already done double takes like that, you know? And he's going, oh, who the fuck I'm looking at? You know, horrible attitude. So I said, look, look, look there, like this, you know, just up banking a bit. No, 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 I'm like, oh, forget it. Like, it's, uh, I'm getting really scared. By this point, it's getting a lot darker now. And I said, I want to go home. I want, I want to go home. I want to go home like this. So he sets off walking and that were it. But as we're walking, I look back and his head's following. So, so Kev didn't see it? No. He wasn't interested because he was a horrible person. So if anything that I were interested in, he'd like, oh, shit. Well, he were an abuser, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So why would he have interest in what I have interest in? You know what I mean? You know? I think he were, I think he... But he didn't get... It's a, a signature with these things, sort of like... The... That didn't have hope. Didn't have hope? No. So that was something different, you think? Mm. It's like what you call a Bigfoot, I suppose. I don't know what I've put there, but yeah. It's like what I've put... Um... I didn't believe in them, did I? I were like, get 
right, big feet, you know what I mean? No, 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 not buying it, you know? So I never really mentioned it because I didn't believe it. So why would I? It's the first time I've ever seen it, but I'm used to seeing grey, so it's not a belief system, is it? If I'm used to seeing it, it, it it's actually exists. But because this thing that I've never believed in actually just there and it appears, and I've never seen it since, then I'm still in denial that it exists. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. The orange globes, right, like I said, I don't know whether I were asleep or awake, but it was just as real as me talking to you now. And I'm with Psycho Cave and we're coming from the other side of the Snicket. The, this place where it happened is like, if you go out at the bottom of this street and you carry straight and straight and straight on, it's, there's a school there. And um, we're kind of coming from the other side. It's dark. And we've got Bruce the dog with us. I remember he's in front of us and, and we're coming on and he's talking about something. I don't know, but I remember about laughing about something in this conversation. It wasn't all bad. We did have us fun moments, I remember that. But we're laughing about summer, and then <sighs> there's like some, there's a fence. It's grey, it's the tall ones with the splits at the top. Now that, that, that fence wasn't there when I had this dream. It were a different fence. It were like wooden slats with like thin metal going through. And that were probably the first thing I thought is, oh, it's, oh, it's got a grey fence now. And, and then I remember seeing some, there's a wall here, a dry stone wall and a cricket field is just there. And then this side, it's school. And there's some bushes. And through the bush, you know, little bits of leaves and stuff, I could see orange colour, right, orange colour. Really orange. And as I walk, I'm talking to him, but as I'm walking on, it's like going in and out, in and out, because of thickness of bushes and where leaves are. And I didn't take much notice of it. I just thought, oh, I just wonder what that orange thing is. And that were it. And just carries on talking to him. And as we're getting closer, I then see what looks like the edge of this orange globe. But it's probably as tall as this room and as wide, perfectly. And it's not giving off any light on the ground, anywhere around it, it's just containing its own orange light. It were really bright, but it don't bright up anything around it, nothing illuminates. And it's coming, it, it, whatever it is, it, it's at that angle, whereas we're walking at that angle. So I can't see them other two yet. So as I'm walking on, it's then that I clock another one to that side of it. And it's exactly the same, but it looks smaller because of the distance. It's a bit further behind, but there's a bit of a gap. Not much of a gap, but I can see the gap. And then goes a bit further. And I'm thinking, what are they? What are they? And I couldn't work out what, I wasn't frightened. I just couldn't work out what they were. They were just there, these, orange too now, orange globes. And he's still talking away, now and again I dance her and da 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 and, and, and I'd look again and there's a third one coming into view behind it. So you've got your one, two, your three here. There's a school there. Where they are, there is a school. Where would that school? Nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen. Next minute, as I can see this first one that first came into my view and it's opening up like, if you imagine a donut, 
It's got that roundiness about it when in, in centre. And it's opening up like that. And opening and closing, but it's like a heartbeat. So it's doing it in rhythm. It's and then but every time it opened up, it got that bit bigger, it'd close, but never fully close. And then it'd open up and then close again. And open up and then it's big enough. And I can see through it. I can see the grass beyond it. But it's not lighting up that grass, but I can see it. And then a grey appears in this hole. And it was really, really tall, really tall. Because these things are like as tall as this. So, you, you know, it's filled up this hole. And it's there and it's tall, it's skinny, it's long arms, long legs. And then it starts, as we're carrying on walking, he ain't got a clue, he's just yap, yap, yap. We're carrying on walking and I'm kind of looking and it's coming out of this whole thing. And it, as it's getting closer, it's getting smaller. How does that work out when, when perspective's wrong? It should have been taller when it was closer to me and smaller further away, but it wasn't like that. It had got smaller and it's coming down this little bit of a banking until it's parallel with us and there's the grey fence with the split at the top. And as I'm walking, I'm like, oh, look, oh, look, it's a little grey. What? I would, would I normally ever carry on like that towards a grey? No. But I were right excited, oh, isn't it cute? You know, like it's some sort of teddy bear. And he's going, ain't a great, it's a little old woman. Kevin, it's a great, it's a little old woman. She's got her hair tied up in a bum. Weirdly enough, if you think back about it, the rabbits and baby alien ones that I told you about, the little grey woman with her hair in a bunny, exactly the same, exactly the same woman sort of thing. And I'm, I just can't figure out why he's not seeing what I'm seeing. And it's walking parallel, two or three foot away, fencing between us. He's just chuntering away in my ear all. And this is just looking, at, looking up at us, walking with us. And as it gets to end, in my head, it says, bye, bye, love you, bye. And it carries on walking up. Walking up where this fence goes up a snicket and we go straight on. And I went, did you wear that? And he went, no, what are you on about? So he's not seeing what I'm seeing. But these orange globes and now can that grey be big at that end and small at this end when it should be the other way around? And that's when I realised I thought, I don't like you, Kev. I don't like you. It would be nice to me, I think, for that reason, to deter me away from him. So in, his, in your life, he was doing something that was affecting the relationship with you. Yeah. What, in terms of like the frequency of the experiences, did it, did it up? Oh yeah. Did it ramp up when you were with him? Or, yeah. Or, or down? Yeah, up. Up? Yeah. So his energy brought something to Something bad. I had this camera, um, it bought me it. I mean, it was horrible. But when it come to Christmas birthday, I'd just buy me loads of stuff. And he bought me this camera and it was um, a Samsung, I don't know, it was right expensive, this little digital camera thing. <clears throat> and I'm sat on bed with it once. And he's sat on bed and he's on his bloody iPhone or whatever he was doing. And I, I went like that and I, I took him photos, you know, just testing this camera out. There's nothing in my room. There's no, no orbs, there's nothing going on, you know what I mean? I'm just taking photos. And I took one of him, just, just sat there and he's leant over and he's got his phone in his hand. And these blue orbs stuck. It were like, it were made of Velcro. It like someone's gone like that and thrown all these blue bloody balls at him and there were orbs, 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 blue orbs stuck. I bet there were 30 of them stuck all over him. Nowhere else in the room, just him. 
Like energy attachment. Yeah. Do you think that's what they were? I think so, yeah. But do I have the proof now? No, because he smashed the camera up. Not long after, took it off me. Boom, straight with foot. Yeah. Um, another time, and then he's... I'm not sure. I think, yeah. I think spirit and all what have you is all connected in with ET stuff anyway because of all the incidents that I've had with him. So I dropped someone on the floor in the bedroom one time and I've gone down on my hands and knees to get it because it's gone under a bit of wardrobe, so I've had to go like that. But as one hand's there and others getting it, he's come and he's gone like that on my hand, stood on my hand, boom, like that on my hand and pulled this wardrobe over top of me, yeah. Next minute, he's stood there and he's making a joint. Stood by the bedroom door and he's making a joint. And my, my hand's out here, you know what I mean? I've kind of prized the wardrobe but put it up. It, oak could trigger him. I don't know what it was, it was just anything. One minute it'd be all right, next minute it was psycho. And this wardrobe, it was like as if it's under its own powers, just gone boof and flown his way. And he's gone down the stairs. Yeah. So the wardrobe knocked him down the stairs? The wardrobe knocked him downstairs. It's kind of, I've watched it move and kind of doof, straight over. Like somebody's gone like that with feet and it's gone straight on to him. And he's lost his balance and gone downstairs. Shit, what happened to him? No, it was Kev, one it survived, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he make of that? What, what was his reaction? I, it was good. It was my reaction because I thought, they really don't like him. So I was pleased about that. Because if I weren't going to get rid of him, some it would. <laughs> you know, I sound really callous, but it was horrible. Horrid, but, you know, he had just broke your hand on this. Y yeah. Yeah. So you don't think it, you, you did it subconsciously? En energy, no. No. I were in agony with my frigging hand, wasn't I? It's not like I had any thought going on thinking, you know, I'm going to attack you with this wardrobe, you know what I mean? I, I mean, it's impossible for me to do that. You know, is it? I don't know. But once we were sat in bed and, well, we want, we're just sat on the bed and he's there, my door's here, and I had this little like a brass latch because my daughter used to, you know, come in or whatever in the middle of the night and steal my laptop or whatever. And I had this little brass latch and as he, it's in my eye line, he sat there and I'm sat here and I'm on my laptop or whatever I'm doing. And then he's talking away, but I'm not looking at him. I'm watching this latch lifting up, lifting up, lifting up lifting up and then it just went ding, Drop, dropped itself. The door went bang, right against the wall. He jumps up and I felt this cold, come ice cold to this side of me. He jumps up and he says, you fucking it's you, you fucking haunted house, you fucking this and other. I said, it's you that they don't like. Because not bad ever happened while he wasn't there. Not that bad, like him standing on my feet, yeah. uh, my, my fingers, you know. But for that to do that, we're trying to get rid of him. I'll always say that it would try to get rid of him. Like it, yeah, yeah. In everyday life, we've got to shut off to it in everyday life. Um, you know, I'd wake up after something's gone on or something's gone on throughout the day. <sighs> yeah, it, it can be, be traumatising, emotional. It can be funny. It's no positive. I can't, I can't see any positive in it. But I've got to carry on. I've got to carry on with this, with this life, because if I don't, I'd be forever in far walls. I wouldn't be at a cop and I'd be in a mental institute, put it that way. So is there a part of you that thinks that, there must be a part of you then, sorry, that, that thinks that there has to be a reason for all this? Oh yeah. What do you think it is? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I really, I really don't know. 
I don't know what it is. Because it would be easy to think you must be important to them. Well, I think there's millions that are important to them, so we're not that important if there's millions of us. We can't be. Where are you in terms of how you feel towards them? At one point, I missed them. I really missed them, like they were my other family. I had a bit of probably Stockholm Syndrome. Is it Stockholm Syndrome? And I'd get upset if they didn't come for months. But now it's like, they come, they go. I don't feel that anymore. I don't hate them, but I don't love them. I don't miss them, but I do miss them. It, it's so hard to... So it's just the familiarity that you miss? Yeah, probably familiarity of it all, yeah. Yeah. I don't like the trauma, but without the trauma, I wouldn't... I won't be speaking out about the experiences. There's no reason to really, would I? In overall, in terms of what they look like, you get a sense of is it a particular group or the different ones with different agendas? Do you think? Hmm. <sighs> suppose it's like having a battle of two countries, isn't it? They've both got an agenda, but they fight for that one agenda, even though it's two separate agendas. You know what I mean? It's, it's who can outdo who? That's what I feel like it is. I could be wrong, me personally. Yeah. Do you get the sense that there's multiple groups interfering with yeah. humanity? Yeah. With various... I want, I want to say... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say multiple, but maybe some come in as just watchers, you know. And some, some just observe. Yeah, yeah. And others come in as like doing experiments or whatever. Probably just seems like cattle, some of us, you know. So you were talking to me before about the worst part is the unknown. Yeah. Because yeah. if you think if you knew it would be less traumatic. I'd open the door and say, right, what do you want now? <laughs> well, I wouldn't really would I, but it, I, I think me personally, not everybody feels like I do. You've got to look at it that way, so on a personal basis. Um, if I had an inkling of what they actually wanted or what they wanted to do and gave me that option... I'd feel better because I would then have a say in it. I would be able to say, no, you're not doing that. Oh, yeah, you are. You can, yeah. You know, but they don't give you that option. They just do it. So they not only do that, they just take your dignity as well. Yeah, so it's, it's, the, it's the... You know, what? would I want to be attacked in my bed? No, but I have been, you know. So where's the option? Where, where's my option? Where's... Has there been any interest from, you think, an authority here? Yeah. Have you had dealings with those guys? Yeah. How's but, that? How's that? At one point, I had my phone tapped. And now, I can't say whether that's my lab authority, whatever. No, nobody had any reason to tap my phone. It's not like I were claiming social security benefits and work, you know. You know what I mean, doing anything dodgy. There were no reason and there, it happened twice and one were recently last year. And I, and I knew, I knew, it, I could hear, it's like, and someone <coughs> down the phone, but they tried muffling the cough <coughs> like this. And I went, look at you, F off. And they never thingy after that. It's not like I were talking about or, or you know, how to do with subject, but then there were, used to be two guys after, in, uh, when I was 41, with all the incidents with Kev, there used to be two blokes, alternate mornings, quarter past six every morning in the summer months, and they'd come up, um, when I park at Bottomett Street, and then day after it'd be an older guy that'd park at Bottomett, and they'd both wear hats, old-fashioned hats, no reason to wear them, you know, and they'd sit there with a the newspaper on thing. I thought, well, there's nobody around here 
dodgy uh, you know on this street that's because at that you know there will be now because you know worse people have moved in but then the one and it was the same time as the phone tapping 